the most famous long distance traveller to have landed here was called Christopher Columbus. He named the island Hispaniola and founded the first Spanish stronghold of the New World. Today this popular holiday destination is better known as the Dominican Republic. But bright beaches are not everything the eastern part of this island has to offer. Europe's second most popular fruit is also from here. Very often carrying this sticker, but no farmer can produce fair trade products alone. Demetrio Madeira has two hectares of land and about 8,000 banana trees. He is part of the cooperative Asubanu, which is committed to fair trade conditions, no exploitation of labour, no discrimination and compliance with environmental criteria. The land belongs to Demetrio, therefore for each box sold he gets a guaranteed $8.75 or more, and on top of that he gets $1 of social premium, money that goes directly to the cooperative and funds important development projects. It is easy to see why 90% of the banana farmers in the region of Mao now participate in fair trade. It has many advantages, most importantly it improves our quality of life. The social premium we have is investing in education or in sport. That has not existed before. It helps poor farmers like us. A sports field, a maternity ward, but also this public school in Mao have benefited from the social premium. Previously, dozens of students were taught outside in sweltering heat or interrupted by sudden rains. With the money we have received from Asubanu, we could expand the school to two classrooms. This has greatly relaxed the situation. We have 400 pupils, there are more and more and we need space for them. Back in Demetrio's field, the harvest work is done by migrants from the Dominican Republic's even poorer neighbour, Haiti. 250 Dominican pesos, about 5 euros, are their daily wage. The collaboration works despite existing prejudices. The Haitians want this work, they ask for it. Dominicans prefer to work in supermarket or an office or are self-employed. Haitians, however, are hard workers, so they go to the field. It is also because they are allowed no other work. Jose Lu came here from his native Haiti 10 years ago. Asubanu was a blessing for him, because unlike many immigrants, he is employed and even insured. The money I earn I send to my family. I cannot do anything else, this is why I work here. Generally speaking, Haitians in the Dominican Republic face some strong opposition, says human rights activist Sonia Pierre. Masses of workers are at the mercy of their superiors. Work permits are valid for zones that they can only leave with special permission. Yet the capital of Santo Domingo would be unthinkable without the Haitians. Most of the buildings in the city were built by them. A common practice, particularly in the building trade, is to let the Haitian workers work for a month. Shortly before they are to be paid, they call the immigration office. The workers from Haiti are reported as illegal and expelled. With this common trick, builders often save a lot of money. Political solutions are not in sight. In parliamentary elections, the Haitians are not discussed. Only discussions of labour laws and social standards, catalyzed by fair trade, may change things for them. In the Dominican Republic, the most important concern is that the farmers are empowered, so that it becomes possible for them to treat their employees better. We have seen quite clearly that the employer-employee relationships on fair trade farms are legal and that the Haitians don't have to fear every day that they will be pushed away. The road to the village Chingelo is regularly flooded during the rainy season. The church, school and shops remain inaccessible for days. Yet politicians have remained inactive. The fact that finally a 70 metre long bridge is completed is thanks to the local people's cocoa business. Oh 
San Francisco de Macorís, the main cocoa growing area, Coparagro deliver cocoa to the US and Europe from 1700 small farmers here under the fair trade label without using middlemen and exporters. The economic crisis hit us badly. Two years ago we had to store the cocoa for months. But thanks to the cooperative, all the farmers have survived it well. We have borrowed money from each other to survive. This year has been very good for cocoa exports. The minimum price guaranteed by fair trade serves as a safety net. Currently, revenues are high. This pleases LV10 Lizardo, who has inherited 2,400 cacao trees from his father. The farmer, agricultural student and chocolate lover is fully committed to the cooperative and the fair trade concept, not least because of the social premium which has allowed Chingelo to have its bridge. Each farmer works for himself but it is also part of the cooperative, which in turn acts for us all, and also holds important information. The doors to this information are open to all. I feel in good hands. The bright orange pulp that LV and his workers have released is brought in bags, sometimes individually, to San Francisco de Macorís Cooperative. There the process begins. First is the fermentation in which the beans first develop the characteristic flavour and colour. Next is the drying, after which the shrunken beans can be packed and shipped to chocolate producing countries. With various tests, the moisture, density and flavour of the beans are examined. The final cut test is the smell test. Yet fair trade does not necessarily equate to prosperity. In the cooperative is Manuel Ten, who manages only one hectare of land. He provides six boxes of raw cocoa for the equivalent of 170 euros. No, that's not enough to survive. We want to help to make small farmers into medium-sized farmers. We offer training, provide information on opportunities, but also on regulations on how the land should be managed. This has shown great success. The farmers produce more and better. Before the export leaves the next morning, the cocoa of Coparagro must still be taken to the port. The sudden rain makes the loading a laborious affair, because the beans cannot become wet. After 30 tonnes of cocoa are sent to Europe or the USA, it is hoped that growing awareness to the consumers and education about the living conditions of farmers in the producing countries will allow fair trade products to increasingly establish a place in the mass market.